John was just such a, a biblical Christian. He cared about the scriptures. He cared about applying the scriptures. Uh, he sat under the authority of scriptures, but he didn't worship the scriptures. He worshiped he worshiped Jesus. Uh, he, he was always calling attention to Christ, never to himself. If there's one person who wasn't impressed with John Stott, it was John Stott. He thought of himself as an ordinary human being, and uh, he was very conscious of not letting people uh, think too highly of him, uh, and not give him too much honor. And he was such a gentle, humble, and yet extremely significant person. Uh, he was a chaplain to the Queen of England. Uh, in 2005, Time Magazine named him one of the 100 most influential people in the world. And yet, he was so self-effacing, uh, so much wanting to defer credit and to glory to other people um, or to, to the Lord. Uh, when I first came to InterVarsity Press, I met a Chinese woman who, whose husband had become a Christian through reading Basic Christianity, which is his first book. Uh, John got his start doing evangelistic missions at university campuses here in the States and in, in the United Kingdom. And he always had this passion for the gospel, for the full gospel, the true gospel. Um, he was a teacher. And he, he wrote more than 50 books, and most of them are commentaries and trying to tell uh, what the gospel, what, what the Bible was talking about. And so often I had the experience, I remember I was with a group of um, pastors, and one of them said, after you hear John Stott speak or after you read his commentary, you say, yes, that's what the Bible is saying. Why didn't I get it that way? You know, it, there's just such a, a clear, lucid um, understanding of things. We want to conform our thoughts to his thoughts. It is from Jesus that we derive our understanding of God and of man, of good and of evil, of duty, of destiny, of time, of eternity, of heaven and of hell. Our understanding of everything is conditioned by what Jesus taught. And this everything means everything. And it includes his teaching about the Bible. We have no liberty to exclude anything from Jesus' teaching and say, well, I believe what he taught about this, but I do not believe what he taught about that. What possible right have we to be selective in our belief in the teaching of Jesus? We have no competence to, to, to set ourselves up as judges and to, to decide to accept some parts of his teaching while rejecting others. Probably his most significant book in the eyes of many uh, is The Cross of Christ where you put together this understanding of what the atonement means for us. People can go off one extreme or another on the cross, uh, but Stott presents it in all of its fullness, in all of its complexity, but in a way that uh, brings together the, the both sides of the cross, the extremes of the cross, the human dimension, the divine dimension, and brings them together into uh, a complete portrait. He had this remarkable publishing um, impact with more than 50 books and uh, his books translated in more than 60 different languages. But to him, it was not a brand. It was not something that he was pursuing. It was always what came out of his life, what came out of his teachings. And we were privileged to be his major publisher here in the United States. Uh, but he also published with another number of other companies too. And I think all of evangelicalism Ray has benefited from his contributions to his understanding of scripture, to his, his tremendous humility, um, and yet confidence in the power of the gospel and scripture. John Stott has been a tremendous contribution to publishing, but a much greater contribution to the kingdom of God.